thanks, Phil <coughs> and Dennis. <coughs> for you to, just so you know, I've, ha I've had a cough for a while, some of you. Oh, wow, there's a few people here. Praise the Lord. Okay. Besides that, um, we're social distancing. Just because I know it's live. We are social distancing. And um, now I'm COVID tested and I'm negative, so I'm, re so I'm fine. Uh, but I've had a cough and I went to see the doctor again on Friday. And uh, the doctor said, well, Claude, the key thing for you right now is don't talk. I said, do you know what I do? <laughs> and I said, maybe, maybe God's trying to say something. But um, I have been trying to conserve, but <clears throat> not, not often easy. But also just speaking into the discipleship, thing, discipleship um, as a good pastor and some of us, you always test the waters. So I use myself and my lovely wife as guinea pigs. So that way, if it's good or not, we'll know. But it's been a, a good journey, and I think there's great merit, and, and it's a great tool. Uh, I, I trialed it myself with one lady, uh, with somebody here, and Margaret actually was here when she finally came to the Lord. It took about six months. We'd Bible read. I'd add, obviously, our Pentecostal edge, and I'd always ask, I'd always ask uh, prayer for her. Can't help it. Can't help it. It's who I am. And so, um, you know, I often say, uh, I think I'd, I'd be a, bapt a good Baptocostal. That's just because I love the Word so much and I love the Spirit. I think both together there's power. I think sometimes, you know, we can learn from each other, but we want to sit somewhere. But anyway, another story for another time. And so, journeying with this lady for about six months... <clears throat> she finally gave her heart <coughs> to Jesus. And I better stop, get on with the message, because I think my voice will be limited. Father, thank you for this time. I pray this word goes forth. I pray we receive it right now. Far Holy Spirit, empower me. Help me not to cough as much. And I pray, Father God, that we receive this word and we truly get it. Now, this word that I want to share on is, is very simple. It's a simple word. And really, it has to do with walking in the Spirit. Keep that open and ready. Mandarin. I've used this illustration before. That is the fruit of the Spirit right now. That there represents the fruit of the Spirit. Singular. Should be about nine attributes in there or nine elements, nine segments that represent the fruit of the Spirit. But I want to say to us that walking in the Spirit... Sometimes we over-spiritualize it. And I believe that the fruit of the Spirit displays walking in the Spirit and is spiritual. I think we downplay it. So if you could turn with me to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. <clears throat> For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. <clears throat> and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. I'd love to spend a bit more time on that, but, but I can't right now. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, <clears throat> fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. I just want to say here, pause right now. Some of us, at some stage, at some times, have done that, have been like that. We've allowed that flesh. What I found is, though, I think, <clears throat> is that we're quick to acknowledge it, quick to come to the Lord when we do blow it and say, Lord, simple, <clears throat> be aware of it. I've blown it and turn to Jesus. Come under the blood. Come under the forgiveness straight away. Deal with it, nip it. You know, that's what I love about King David. What separated him from anybody else, he had this heart to acknowledge. 
And that's why he was the man after God's own heart. He leaned in, even when he blew it big time and rawly. And I think really one of the, the, the major stuff-ups, if I can say this, I mean, God says of him, a man after my own heart. And you understand why, why he, he said that, and that's a message in itself. But he blew it rawly, if I can say, and yet so favoured, yet so loved, because he understood something <clears throat> about the goodness of God. <clears throat> He understood something about the mercy of God. I've tried everything, Jim. But thank you. I've had two throat lozenges already, I think. You can only have so many in a period of time. So be quick to come to Jesus and to turn. Let it go. Deal with it. Nip it. <clears throat> and he says, of which I tell you beforehand... Just as I told you in the time past <coughs> that you practice such things, for those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, I just want to say this. If you're a Christian, you're not practicing those things. Do you know what practice means? You actually intentionally practice them. You want to do them, you continually do them, because you're pra- you know, like anything, you hone in your gift. So don't separate what it's saying right now if you practice but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long-suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control wow against such there is no law and those who are christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit don't you love that this is walking in the spirit these attributes in our life should be so evident for everyone to see. I want to say this to us. Can you imagine if the constant theme and constant pattern, if people could say of Christians, ah, there is a common factor and a common theme within Christians. There is something that I see within them that there are these attributes that I've just mentioned. Can you imagine? And, and I, don't, I want to add to this, making disciples, I thought, and, and I'll share a little bit more. But can you imagine if that was so constant in our lives and that we loved one another the way Jesus said? He says, by this, the world will know what? You are my disciples. If you love one another. Everything stems from love. And I think there'd be such a flooding of people coming into the kingdom just in that itself when they saw us loving on one another, us displaying this kind of fruit that God is trying to cultivate within us. Amazing. (coughs) If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. I'll stop there. Jesus said, I am the vine. If you abide in me and me in you, you will bear much fruit. The key is abiding. The key is living in, walking with. To walk in the Spirit is to move with the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit, to be in the Spirit of God. It's to live there. You know, a vine, as uh, Pastor Graham once, I, I love his analogy, you know, he said, he, he goes, uh, a tree doesn't go trying to squeeze out a fruit. It just does. It's a byproduct. And see, as we abide in the vine, and the Father, the analogy is the Father's the vine dresser who prunes us, who knows the vine. He loves on us. He sings over us. And sometimes it's tough love. There will be tough love. And sometimes you have to prune right back. I've got a vine. And sometimes it shocks me. And my wife's ruthless more than me. And I'm thinking, no, I want to leave a little bit. She goes, no, cut it back. Cut it. And it's true. You've got to cut it right back. You know, sometimes in our life, God's going to cut us back. So we can bear much fruit. The other thing is that the Holy Spirit is the one who produces this kind of fruit. So we think of the Father as the, the vine dresser, and we're the vine, we're abiding, Jesus the vine, we're the branches, we're abiding. The Holy Spirit is the sap. You live there. It happens. It is a byproduct, a result of every seed producing of its kind. And because we are in Christ and the Holy Spirit was within us, the fruit that should be produced, that God is trying to cultivate, 
is this kind of fruit. And it's so spiritual. Don't, I think we dismiss it. I think there's been a poor representation of even the preaching of this message. And I'll get to that in a little bit more. So it's singular, but it has nine elements and nine attributes. And I've just mentioned them. And I want to start off with the, the first one. <coughs> the first one is love. You know, and love. You know, I think we've painted a wrong picture of love. I actually get annoyed with the picture that we've painted of love. Because we see those, oh, this nice, touchy, <coughs> feely. <coughs> and it can be emotion. But tell you what, love <coughs> is so strong. Please don't get distracted with my cough right now. Love is so strong. These gifts are so strong. And really, it's godliness. These gifts are of God. It's godliness. And God is not weak, but powerful. And we haven't received a spirit of what? Of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And the first one is love, because everything stems from love. And love is so strong. It's powerful. You know what's the strongest force within us, if I can say that? And love is the tree. God is love. Love is the tree. We abide in love. Love should be oozing out. But sometimes what we, what we do, we allow the flesh instead of allowing the Spirit of God. And we can, and we've all done it. We've all missed it. We've all blown it. And I'm not here to say, don't. It should be effortless. You shouldn't be striving. Sometimes you try too hard and it's actually harder. Rest. Abide. And that's what the, the plant does. It doesn't, it, 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 it's cultivated. Because it's being obedient. It's listening. And I want to break down some of these, these um, nine attributes. And so love is so strong. And Jesus said what? No greater love has this than one lay down his life for his friends. It is sacrificial <clears throat> you guys okay you coping with my cough you're thinking why don't you get someone else to preach well it's short notice and i had this message and please see me through and, and i'm safe which is okay love is sacrificial it's powerful it's strong it's courageous i mean it, it's so strong there's nothing weak about love there's nothing weak about god you know, you know what love does? <laughs> love rescues. Love protects. You know, mothers. You ever seen a mother protect her child or someone? Man, she'll put herself in front of anything. I mean, that's insane. That, that's what love is. Love is an action word. Love isn't this, you know, you know what I'm trying to get at. Love is so strong. We've weakened it. Love is powerful. It's the most powerful force on earth. Love will always overcome hate. It's the only thing. If you have fire, how do you quench it? With water. If you have hate, how do you quench it? With love. Love is the only thing that will break it down. It is the most powerful force. You know, even in the animal kingdom, uh, and I experienced this, I think I was with Carla one time at uh, Voyager Point, where we live, there was uh, a mother duck and these little ducklings. And I thought, oh, how cute. And I, I, was, I was sort of mucking around, wanted to get close or chase them or something. Man, this duck did it. It went wild on me, man. It turned. It, it flew. I think it hit you, didn't it, Kehala? It hit your head. Yeah, that's right. I thought, oh, my goodness, I'm trying. <laughs> but we did both run from a duck. <laughs> Mother duck. But that's, that's love. Man, it protects. It's so strong and it's so powerful. Oh, it was funny, actually, remembering that story. Yeah, and that's what people do, they'll do crazy things. And I pray that part of making disciples, when people see you and I <coughs> loving one another, treating <coughs> each other in love, wow, it doesn't always happen, does it? Come on, we've all got experiences, even from well-meaning Christians. Let's be real. <coughs> the other thing I want to talk about is joy. I love this one too. I'm in this season right now. Joy. 
Joy unspeakable. The joy God gives. The joy of salvation. Knowing your Savior, our Maker. Knowing who we are in Him. Knowing where we're going. This inner joy that comes from God, not based on now, not based on circumstances, but the love of the truth. And we could look around and it'd want to rob us of our joy. But don't let it. As we heard that song, <coughs> Living in the Victory. I said to even someone the other day, you know, the problem with us is we see with our own lens. We view life with our own lens. We view life in this world. We've got to, see, we've got to view life from God's lens and eternity. Not now. Don't base it on what you're going through. Don't base it on the circumstance. You know, let's face it. I'm just, not that I want to, but I'll say this. If I die, I'm in a better place. Simple. I get promoted. I'm in a far better place. <clears throat> and, and truth be told, are there times in my life where I almost said, hey, Lord, <coughs> easier to be with you? Yeah, truth, truth be told. I've rathered, but I've also known it's not time, and I also know I'm needed, and it's better for me to be here. But that's our walk. That's the joy we carry that the world can't comprehend or understand. But we base everything on this world and nothing in this world satisfies. And I tell you, when you do the will of God and you're walking out the will of God for your life and being obedient, <coughs> no greater joy for the joy that was set before Jesus endured the cross. No greater joy. Joy unspeakable. This joy that comes from salvation. Sometimes, well, you know what? We've got to draw it out from the wells of salvation. You know, more and more in my life now, it's, it's a gauge for me. Joy and peace, <coughs> which I'll get to. If I don't get peace and joy together, I won't move into something. I won't lean in. I won't even do it. People want to ask me to do something. I won't do it. If it's robbing me of peace and joy, because what the kingdom of God is what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. If it's not there, it's my gauge. If I don't see it, if it's robbing me, I'm going, this is not the kingdom of God. That's my gauge. And I'm just giving you, gauge it, gauge it. Is there righteousness? Is there peace? And is there joy? If there is, the kingdom of God is there. Chase after it, see it, enjoy it, revel in it. If that's not there, it's not the kingdom of God. Avoid it. Stay away from it. Come on, that's good. Anyway, that's fine. Not that I, yeah. But that's good. And we need it. Let it be a gauge for us. You know, I was facing a, a, a time in my life when, and we all, we, all, we all have struggles, but there were a particular time where I, I, there was, I was struggling with things and I, I was fathoming all these things that I'd um, <clears throat> done for this particular person, what was going on. <coughs> and God had to highlight that scripture to me in Romans 4.17. It's not about eating and drinking as much as, I don't mind having a bit of both. Just putting it out there. Don't be a hypocrite. Although I've learned to limit. And sometimes I might have blown. But anyway, that's okay. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord. You're good. Which is good. <laughs> anyway, peace. No, don't encourage me right now. I'll go on a tangent. Let me tell you. There are times when we also sow in tears. We weep. But what? Joy comes in the morning. Find a song. Joy is loving God, loving people. Denying yourself and yielding to the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> you get great joy when you help somebody else. <coughs> you get great <coughs> joy. When you look after somebody else, there's something about it. You, ever, you know when you've almost paid it for, you've done something, or you've uh, not been you focused? Doesn't it give you joy? There's, there's a joy about it. That's just amazing. Anyway, peace. It even sounds bliss, doesn't it? Just say peace to someone. Oh, peace be to you. I mean, doesn't it sound nice? Peace. It even sounds so peaceful. I love hearing it. <coughs> Stay with me. Peace like a river. And, you know, there's something peaceful about water. Have you noticed that? Sometimes when you go for a walk and you see water, something tranquil, 
which is wonderful. Something peaceful, even about water. <clears throat> but you've heard me share this many times. And uh, when the kids were growing up, <coughs> is it annoying you, the cough, by the way? You're putting up with it. Just chill with it. Ignore it. <coughs> the kids would ask me, Dad, what do you want for your birthday or Christmas or Father's Day? And you know what I'd always say? Undies, no. <laughs> oh, unless they were Calvin Klein. Nah, no kidding. <coughs> Love, joy, peace. That's it. So what do you want? That's the truth. Give me that. I think when you're raising four kids, <coughs> you understand what I'm talking about. You just want those moments. You need some love, joy and peace. Give me some peace. You'd be in the car, you know, and the siblings start. We've got a big car, so we started separating all of them. Two in this seat, two in that seat. I mean, just give me some peace. See, some people, you know what it's like. That's really what I'm after. But the peace God gives you is the word shalom. And it's such a good word. Shalom, shalom. Why don't you say that song twice? Say shalom, shalom. That word shalom means the totality. That your spirit, soul, body, well-being, finances are well. That's why when Jewish people greet one another, I say shalom or shalom, shalom. Because they understand it. This totality of God. And we have peace with Christ. Christ is our peace. That's why in the midst of what's going on, even in the world, we can have this peace. Jesus said, what? My peace I leave with you. Not as the world does. Let not your heart be troubled. There will be things. There will be tribulation. There will be stuff. He's warned us. There will be things that are going on. Things that will happen even in our own world and our own life and things in the world. He says, but don't be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Be of peace. Be at peace. My peace I give you. It's his peace that we're after. <coughs> but we run to every other source rather than making Christ our peace. We have to turn to him every time. There is no substitute. There is no other substitute. I sometimes wonder, well, I wonder how do people get through life without Jesus? And their answer is they really don't. They don't. They turn to something else. <clears throat> but we can have a peace in the midst of whatever goes on. <coughs> in the midst of our storm. But how? You have to shift your thinking. Shift your attention. As you make him Lord... As you set your eyes on him, as you fixate yourself on him, as you lift him up above every circumstance and cause everything else to come under that, there is a peace that comes within. Because you know why? God loves us. And we've got to trust a, <coughs> a loving God. Trust the love of the truth. <coughs> trust that he has your best interest at heart. Trust that you're the apple of his eye. Can you imagine that? Do you think like that? That's where I've learned to live in. That's why I can be kind to myself, forgive myself. I'm the apple of his eye, not just me, you. But do you see yourself that way? That brings me peace. God is for me, not against me. I can have this peace, even in the midst <coughs> of difficulties at home, struggles with our families. We can have a peace, trust in God, <coughs> keep enduring. The other one's long suffering. You know, the best way <coughs> to describe this word is simply this <coughs> to sigh with patient endurance. It's to be long of nose. To sigh, you know, you go, to sigh with patient endurance. And, you know, many of us have had to do this. When you're raising kids, you'll have to do this. Let me tell you. Many a times, you've got to keep going. You know, and sometimes you just keep loving, 
keep praying, keep doing what's right. And I, I just want to add in, sometimes you have to do the old Muhammad Ali tactic. It's called the rubber dub dub. You know what the rubber dub dub is? Muhammad Ali would wear the other opponent down. Just attack, keep, keep going, keep doing, know what to do, keep here. Rubber dub dub, duck, weave, just keep going. Wear him down, wear him down with love. Wear him down with goodness. Wear him down with God. What are you laughing at? <laughs> well, I wish you'd share that thought, Norma. I think I need more water. Not wine water. No. <clears throat> the other one's kindness. To do someone a favor, to think of others, <coughs> put in someone else first. This quality that seeds the need of others and extends a lending hand in deed or time or word or money to be kind or to pay it forward in kind. You know, my um, <coughs> son Daniel the other day sent a text to me. He said, oh, Dad, I had an incident at the, the, sh the shops. There was someone who needed to go in front of me. You know, as sometimes we do, and they had a lot less. So he said, oh, go for it, you know, go in front of me. And then um, that person paid it forward and brought him, I think, five bags of, you know, Coles, Coles bag. <coughs> but why do I say that? It's so simple. It, it, it's just a little thing that means a lot. And I tell you what, it blew him away. He just thought it restored some kindness. <coughs> it restored some uh, form of kindness within humanity even. Do you know what I mean? So some of you might have to share your toilet paper at the moment. When you go to Coles, because it's happened again. I don't know if you've noticed. That's okay. Move on from there. Be kind. It should be our first response. But we, our flesh, you know, we do. Our flesh rises up. Because what do we want? We want justice. We want to defend. And we want to, and you know, and there are elements. Don't get me wrong. It's not God's way. Kill him with kindness. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance, isn't it? <clears throat> Which leads me to the next one. Goodness. To be good. <coughs> to do good. You who know how to do good and don't do it, that's sin. Don't you love that? Sum it up. What's sin? For us. Who know how to do good and don't do it and withhold it, that's sin. Wow. That's what James says. What a, what a simple measurement. You know how to do good? Just do it. You withhold in it. You don't do it. It's sin. Thank God we're under grace. But you know what I mean. But imagine if we thought that way. Goodness. This is how you know. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. It's to be just, to do justly, to fight for a cause that is right, with right motive. <clears throat> and like injustice, and there is a lot of injustice going on, and we should raise that up and you know what while i'm here racism deal with it we need to deal with it can't just put it under deal with racism expose it if it's there deal with it nip it it shouldn't exist and it certainly shouldn't exist in our family in our family of god i can tell you right now it should not exist really come on you and I are the same. And what God is a respecter of what? No persons. No persons. But those who diligently seek him. We're one. We're one by his spirit. Do you know we have a greater bond? Because of the Holy Spirit, you and I are united as one. We have a greater bond than anything else and anything other else, whether it be a, your family member. It's true. If your family member is not in Christ, you have a greater bond with the person next to you if they're in Christ. We're family. All of us. That's how we should see one another. Love one another. Support one another. Encourage one another. <clears throat> Faithfulness. To be faithful. 
the just shall live by faith. To be loyal, dependable, reliable, consistent, constant, committed, without wavering, as in a relationship. To not give our heart to another. To not have any other gods in our life. God is a jealous God. God first, living out of a conviction that God exists and what I do is always unto Him. Whatever we do is unto Him. He is the rewarder. And you know what always scares me in life? I tell you, it's, this scares me. It says when we, we're all going to give an account of our life. Why does it scare me? I'll tell you why it scares me. <clears throat> it scares me because within me, God has given me a capacity. And it's not so much that scares me of, of <clears throat> what I've done, that I'm giving an account of what I've done. What scares me is this, to give an account of what I didn't do, of what I could have done, of what I should have done. That's what scares me. That I'll have to give it... <coughs> an account of my life wow and do you know what i'm not just trying to when you're a pastor let me tell you, you have a responsibility you'll have greater accountability you want to be a pastor go for it be called because i can tell you what if it's not a calling run you want to be a, a pastor you're crazy I, I mean it i'm not just saying that it's one of the hardest things you'll ever do I mean, Moses. Moses, I mean, you know, he had thousands. What a man. And he had a quality in the Bible. It was called gentleness or meekness. The meekest man in the Bible. You might as well go straight into that. This is most probably good, you know why? I'm giving you time to think about everything I'm saying. What do you think? Could be a thing. Yeah. But Lord, I don't want the coughing. I, I can't flow. <coughs> Gentleness, not weakness. Jesus said to be gentle as a dove, but as wise what? As a serpent. Come on. Gentle. It's not weakness, but be as wise as a serpent. Man. Sometimes, you know what we do? We just... We're too gentle. You know what I mean? Tough love. We're, we're not a walkover. I'm not saying be a walkover. In the midst of love, in the midst of this, you know what? You need to stand up for yourself and tell someone the truth in love. In love. And sometimes <coughs> you might need to wait a while because your flesh is, is a little bit hot at the moment. And you need to calm down. You know, a soft answer diffuses anger isn't that true so wait till you calm down and give them a gentle answer <coughs> a gentle response and as i said moses was the meekest man in the bible which is a similar word to gentleness and there's nothing weak about moses see he had an inner strength that was so dependent on god really it's linked to humility this word gentleness it's being humble god resists the property why he gives grace to the humble it's being humble humility gentle there's nothing weak about it see i'm just trying to get our mind to think of these attributes and gifts that they are so spiritual they are godliness that we're walking in the spirit moving with the spirit living it out that they're so powerful that's such a powerful demonstration to all around and they're not weak and that's what i'm trying to say but i think we've painted them as being almost wishy-washy almost oh that's that's nice no no there's nothing we demasculate that, you know, like in, in life at the moment, I think there's a lot of demasculization going on for many years, and I hate it. Get us, get, get, get. You know what I mean? Get slow. In the right way. Stand up. Be assertive. Be strong. Say what you need to say in love. But you can say it in gentleness. You don't have to go, you can say it in such a way that they're the words of wisdom, seasoned with grace, that will just cut through, cut to the heart. It's like, whoa. Do you know what? My wife does that to me very often. Words <coughs> of wisdom that I can't refute. And it silences me because I know I'm done. Claude, zip it. I've learned that. That's what a right word 
of the spirit in gentleness will do. <coughs> and we are to <coughs> restore people with gentleness. Doesn't the scripture say? <coughs> when someone is overtaken by certain things or sin or grief, we're to restore such a one. What? In gentleness. They don't, you don't need to beat them over the head. They already know. The worst thing you can do to someone when they've done something is just remind them. Hello, I know. I know what I've done. I know what I'm wrong. I'm not here for that. (coughs) Don't beat them over the head. Restore such a one with gentleness. Self-control is to be of sound mind. Is to be disciplined. There is restraint, a bit like an athlete who is training for a race and puts himself in a training regime to finish the race. <clears throat> they will need to eat right, sleep right, exercise, <clears throat> study the race, the course, the terrain, the weather. Such diligence. To be sound of mind is to be disciplined. And we sometimes <clears throat> excuse it in some of our areas. But we need to <coughs> discipline ourselves. And that would mean also reading the word, prayer, spending quality time with Jesus, spending fellowship with other believers, coming to church, going to a home group, going to different things <coughs> that are of God. We need to do these things, need to put God first. And you know what? Can I even add this? To me, a discipline is getting somewhere on time. You say, oh, Claude, why are you saying that? Because some of us were late. Um, Yes. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. See, you know, I've learned to deal with this because you've got to understand, I'm so punctual. I'm a stickler for certain things because it shows something. If something starts at a certain time, I'm usually early. Not late, early. (coughs) Just the way I am. And I've had to deal with it. And you know, can you imagine if I mentioned it every time on a Sunday here? I'd be a frustrated preacher. That's the truth. So I've said it. If you can, be diligent also in your time. Because you're honoring God. You're honoring the worship team who's been here. You're honoring everybody else. So we start on time and we're all blessed. Yeah? Is that okay? Is that good? Can we do that? Come on. Yeah, give, that, give the Lord a clap for that one. My goodness. Disciplined. We don't like that word, do we? No one likes that. Discipline. But we do. And you think the great people of the Bible, I think of the Apostle Paul, you know, really, apart from Jesus, my favorite person. I mean, this guy, Paul, relentless. I mean, you can see (coughs) the discipline in his life. But you also see the love. You see the strength. You see the humility. I mean, this guy was amazing. (coughs) What a turnaround that God did (coughs) in his life. I think if we can imitate someone, imitate Christ. But then Paul says, hey, imitate me as I imitate Christ. You know, we're the evidence. We're that living letter. That walking epistle that people will see and read. You know, there's nothing worse than, oh, and God, you know, God's great. He'll, he'll work through anyone <coughs> to save the other person. <coughs> but if someone's seeing your lifestyle, because this has to do with lifestyle. You know, I've been preaching lifestyle Christianity for a, a long time. But would I really want to, if someone said, come Come meet Jesus. Come my, meet my Lord, the one I follow, the one I save. And your life is the very opposite. Come on. Really? No, you're going to be straight up. Sometimes you're going to have to make a choice. And you're going to have to, what's called yield, surrender. And really this is what producing fruit's about. When we yield, when we're yielded, we will yield the fruit. It has to do with surrender ultimately. Either he's Lord or he's not. As we yield to him and don't give in to those things, he is Lord. And I'm not saying <coughs> you, you blow it, but if you're practicing the other things, I question your Christianity. If you're practicing and loving those other things more than these things, 
I'd question your Christianity. I sometimes go, I wonder if they're even born again. That's the truth. I'm being just a little bit real here today. Come on. Or what you're choosing is to gratify the flesh and they're contrary to one another. This great next move of God has to be such a shift <clears throat> that there has to be such a distinction between Christian and non-Christian. I mean that. <clears throat> You'll find there'll be more of a separation as the days keep going, as these end times are upon us, <clears throat> as the Lord's <coughs> coming is closer. More of a separation. It's simple. And that's the thing. And we're going to have to stand. If we could all stand on that note, if we could get the worship team. <clears throat> I want to give you a little bit of an analogy, I suppose, in some ways. The Holy Spirit <coughs> is our guide. And we try and do it without him, which is impossible. You know, it's a bit like this. Have you ever had, had people tell you, they've read the Bible. <clears throat> They're non-Christians. And they go, I don't get it. <clears throat> I don't understand it. <clears throat> it doesn't make sense. And, and in some ways, that's true. <clears throat> but it's the Holy Spirit who brings everything to life. <clears throat> everything <clears throat> to the revelation. It's the Holy Spirit who does it. And, and I heard this great analogy actually from Derek Prince yeah, uh, as I was <coughs> listening to one of his old messages. And he said, if someone came up to you and you just finished uh, your college, your uni, whatever, and he says, well, look, I can give you a map <coughs> or I can give you a guide. And in essence, this is the map. This is our roadmap to life, the Word of God. Holy Spirit's the guide. He illuminates. He wrote it. <coughs> He says, well, you can either have the map or you can have a guide. What would you take? Who would take the map? Not that it matters. <clears throat> Who take the guide? Every time. <laughs> Every time. And that's what it's like. Sometimes we think we can do it ourselves because we've got the map. But you're going to get lost. <laughs> you're going to miss. <laughs> you're going to find yourself in not a good place that's why we have the Holy Spirit He produced this thing He's our guide <clears throat> He leads us into all truth He's the one we have to lean on <clears throat> but we need to yield surrender <clears throat> and the byproduct <clears throat> is God ordained it just like in creation <clears throat> every seed of its kind is producing the byproduct. The fruit of the Spirit is walking in the Spirit. It's powerful. It's spiritual. Don't downplay it. Of course we want to see the gifts of the Spirit. They're for the effective working of ministry. We need both. Absolutely. We always need both. But God is trying to cultivate something within us of Christ-likeness. And as we remember... And maybe the next time we <coughs> start our morning, say, God, help me to produce this kind of fruit today. And what I want us to do this morning is just to linger a little in His presence. <coughs> Abide. So even right now, I want you to surrender. I want you to yield to Him what you're facing, what you've gone through, and allow the Holy Spirit to just come over you and just learn to practice yielding, surrender, rest. Don't do it your way. Many have tried it. God's way works. Don't be a Frank Sinatra. <coughs> what did Frank, Frank Sinatra say? I did it my way. Tell you what, I want to get to heaven, I go... I didn't do it my way. I'm only here because of you. I'm here because I did it your way. So this morning, 
I pray that we would learn to do it His way. Just stay for a little while. Rest. Surrender yourself afresh. Ask the Holy Spirit to come over you and say, this is the fruit. I want to walk in the Spirit. I want to move with your Holy Spirit. I want to hear your voice. I want to obey what you say. Do what you say. Show me what you see. Thank you, Lord.